to talk today about farming and agriculture and the soil and, uh, and everything just working together as a holistic system. I had some guys down today from Iowa State um, who are doing some research on pheasant and quail and bird populations and in conjunction with more cover crop usage and whatnot. So down here in Washington County, Iowa, excellent spot for them to be able to go and evaluate these populations because of all the cover crop usage down in this area. Um, and we've definitely seen a noticeable rise in some of these bird populations. So I think it's interesting to think about our management practices, our products that we're using, the decisions that we're making, and how they're not only impacting um, our yields, which is for the most part what we've looked at so far over the last multiple decades, is all we really look at is how does my decision impact yield? How many bushels is it going to take to pay off that decision? to produce a return on investment, that kind of thing. When really we need to be looking at how does this management decision impact my bottom line profitability? That's all that really matters for running a business and in that aspect. But in looking at the system as a holistic system like I wanted to talk about today, there's more impact on the soil. There's impact on the environment. There's impact on nature and whatnot as well. Like in this case with the pheasant populations, with wildlife, um, building wildlife, wildlife habitat and whatnot. Um, just a, a nice positive side effect, you know, of improving conservation, building habitat for them. We've been now pulling together a lot of data about how does our management practices um, impact soil nutrient availability, crop health, crop yield, and bottom line profitability. Um, and things are happening very quickly. You can change these parameters fast. You can make make improvements. Um, my question is, how many of you as farmers are thinking about how does my management application impact the soil? We were seeing anhydrous rigs running all over the place and it's 60 degrees out. We know we shouldn't be putting it on until the soil is well below 50 degrees and going down, which at this point, it's not necessarily at that. Um, that anhydrous is not, we know what anhydrous does to our skin if you get it on yourself is not good microbes in the soil are made out of the same things that we are so are we thinking about how does this anhydrous impact the living biology in my soil but also the soil chemical reactions and whatnot that it's some pretty um, ab abrasive stuff what about some of our other nutrients as well potassium chloride you know potash we utilize chlorine to kill biology in our swimming pools and in our water and whatnot. Well, we're putting chlorine into the soil and into the water in the soil, which is where our microbes are living because there's some aqueous in the living in the water in the soil. Well, is the chlorine we're putting out there necessarily a good thing for them either, or copper and whatnot too with our fungicides and those kind of things. Like, how do we how do we think about all of this together? I guess is just one dispersion thought here for the weekend. Um, what uh, what is your impact on your soil in the short term? Yes, it can bounce back. Yes, in Iowa we have resilient soils, but some of you around the world, um, like all you guys down in South Africa that we work with, um, your soils are maybe not necessarily as resilient. So we need to make sure that we're treating the soil in a positive aspect, um, so we can produce more, be more efficient, be more profitable in the short term while building carbon, building water holding capacity build improving our impact on water quality and the environment in a long-term play as well to provide and connect that whole, looking back again as a holistic system to be able to survive in the short term, be productive and produce um, a profit and make sure that that profit is there for many years to come in the future.